In today's show, we take a brief look at day one of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, and then we take out a brand new starter ship from Crusader Industries. Welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and we are here at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Day one of the IAE features Crusader Industries. Now, I'm not going to bring you through the whole show because I believe that for the new people that are here, go there. Go look at it because you could rent every one of these ships and get an idea of what you want to do in the burst. And for the rest of us, we've been here over and over again, and there's really only one brand new thing to see and that's the intrepid and we're going to get into that in a little bit before i get into my first look of the crusader industries starter ship the intrepid i just want to give you a psa star citizen server performance is borked during iae it's a free fly and all these brand new people coming in are going to put a strain on the servers that's a bad thing and a good thing because it gives cig an opportunity to look at the performance and figure out if they can ever fix the performance of having so many people hitting the game at once. Now, it also has some quirks with it, and each year it might be a little bit different. This year it was, if you have a helmet on, when you walk into the IAE hall, you are going to find that oxygen just disappears out of your helmet, and you need to take it off before you die. So my suggestion to you is go in civvies. Do not wear your flight suit and your helmet when you go to IAE. Just go to one of the clothing stores and buy a set of clothing or just strip down naked and walk around. That is your best bet. Now in prior years that I was at IAE, these little kiosks that sell you water and food weren't working. I, they might have been working at some point, but they just stopped working by the time I would get home and go to IAE. They were working tonight when I got back. And if you're here, make sure you're getting water and you're getting food because you will die if you don't have any of that. And this is mostly to the new people. Now, one thing I really like about IAE is they have these little dioramas that show you the different jobs that you could currently do inside of Star Citizen. Now, I've seen mining and cargo here, and that's pretty big for the people that are trying to have an industrial presence in the game. I love those two activities. They're very calming to me after a hard day at work. And I've actually been doing a lot of hauling lately in my Nomad and my Hull A. Now, something I can tell you is that IE has a vast range of different ships and each one of the manufacturers is going to have ships that are going to give you a full range of opportunity to get an idea of what those jobs are going to be like. Now with Crusader Industries, you're going to be focused on cargo running and military. And that's primarily the two things that are in the game right now. So they have some really amazing cargo ships like the Spirit and the C-1. And you also have some amazing ships like the Inferno, the Ion, and the Star Runner. The Star Runner is my favorite ship in the game but the gameplay for it is not in the game right now, which is Data Runner. But it does make a nice medium-sized cargo ship, and it's just an amazing ship to fly around in. The A-1 over there, the darker one of the two that you just saw, is a bomber version, a smaller version of the giant ship to our left. And I would definitely guide against getting that as your main driver. I would do a C-1, Spirit, or more or less, when RSI comes up later in IAE, I'll be talking a lot about the Zeus. After walking around IAE for about 20 minutes and clicking on every one of the ships to rent it and looting a bunch of dead bodies because people went there with their helmets on. Yes, I shouldn't have done that, but you know, it's IAE and what are you going to get? Just starter outfits and... I just piled them up in a corner after I looted them. It was pretty funny. Anyway, you're going to see I rented everything. And this is what I want each and every one of the new people to do. Rent everything, 
get it in your hangar, spend time with it, fly it around, and see how it works. But my biggest recommendation I'm going to say here, if you're going to buy a ship, well, I'm not going to give that away right now. We will get to that in just a moment. So we are going to have the Intrepid delivered, and then I'm going to meet up with you in my hangar. There's just something about seeing a brand new ship in your hangar instead of in IAE. It, it just, when it's yours, you just have a, yeah. a much better feeling. Now, I'm not going to go over all the specs and everything about this ship because there was some controversy all over it when it was in the PTU. Uh, first off, it only had a size 3 weapon. And second off, people were just put off by the outside looks, by the aesthetics. Here I am making a mistake standing under the ladder when I open it, but nonetheless, there's just something about this ship and something about every starship that's been coming out in the last two years that gives you so much better of a feeling. I remember that first feeling getting into that Aurora way back 12 years ago or 11 years ago when the hangars first opened up, and it, it was wow. It, it was just that wow. Like, they're putting this beautiful space game into my hands and giving me a ship and that is just wonderful so what i'm going to do in this one is we're just going to go do a bounty hunter mission we're going to do like the initial mission that you get it's going to be a extremely low end ships that we have to destroy now a couple of things i love about the ship and we'll go over in the deep review of it is the interior over the years cig has become to realize that just putting in a ramp at the back end of a ship and having that your sole entryway is just not conducive to a believable um, a, a, a believable ship design. And the reason I say that is that when you look at ships like the C1, when you look at ships like the A1, when you look at ships like the... I mean, there's so many of them, right? We can go over and over it that they just got into this rhythm of every ship. The only entryway was going to be on the back end. And recently we've been seeing ships that have multiple entry points like the Zeus, like this ship. And I know that a starship like the Cutter really does need that design language where it's just a rear entry because that's Drake. Drake is simplistic, right? But when I look at other ship designs that have been out in the last few years, like the Nomad, I love the fact that they took that risk and built it into something like a pickup truck, right? So you have the outside cargo area and the inside. And in the beginning, people were really rating it based on its ability to compete as a fighter. And for the longest time, that's where people really... They, they put all of their opinions was how well does it fight with the advent of mining and salvaging and now cargo running some ships that did not have a very good rating from people before are starting to get very high ratings today. The Nomad in the past, what I did with it was I took a rock, threw it in it, went rock mining and moved everything over to the internal storage of the Nomad and then would sell it and make a lot of money. To me, I always loved it. The, the, I always loved it. I, I always thought it was wonderful. Oh my God, look at that design. It is kind of laughable, but it's also kind of interesting. And I'll talk about the design in a little bit. But now I, I'm having a ball just st starting over like a zero to hero in the Nomad. And it's a great ship. So when people started ranking on this ship, before they even knew what it was about, before they even took a look into the design of the ship, interior, I, I, I was like, wait, I just need to get my hands on it and see what I could do with it. So my review of this is going to take it through what this ship is meant for. It's a starter courier class ship. It's a starter hauling type ship. And I believe that in the future... This is also going to be a starter data runner and everything is there ready to go. I could see that at least one of the two cargo holds in the back could be just replaced with a bunch of servers and the gun will still be there and they'll find some way 
to put some kind of scanner on it somewhere. And I think that will be an upgrade. That will be, instead of $65, maybe $85. And it will have an engine that just goes even faster than this ship does right now. I didn't think I was going to like this ship as much as I do. And I do a lot of these Zero to Hero tests. I have three accounts, Batgirl, Cosmic Cat, and Irina. And on Irina, I do a lot of these, all right, what if I was starting out on this ship? And I started with the Mustang, and after a while, I realized that the Mustang is not as good as the Aurora to be a starter ship, but it's got just that design I wanted. So I, I used it, and... I got past it and I was able to upgrade it after a while and then I said, you know what, let, let me do something a little bit different. Let me get the most expensive one of the early starters, which was a Nomad. I did that and everything worked out really well for me. This ship is coming right in in a class of ships that is dominated by the Titan right now. The Titan is the ship to beat and that is something hard to say because originally I thought it was going to be the 315P but the 300 series ships just haven't been fleshed out they haven't gotten their gold pass and they just don't have that oomph right and everything about the Titan the weaponry the the versatility of it makes it a great ship yeah this one yeah. is going to be more in the it's class so of cool the Nomad the... it's going to be for a very specific starting style. Now, whether you're doing courier missions, which this ship has something in the back of it, which we will go over in my full review, where you can actually stack up to three boxes. Now, that's cool because it, early in the game, when you're taking those first courier missions, you probably have one or two yeah, boxes, yeah. but eventually you might have a lot more. So the um, fact that you could put party, three yeah, boxes you know, inside of your cabinet in your bedroom is pretty uh, so awesome the other new one. but you also have eight cu of space in the back of the ship which puts this right in between the 315p and the titan in that 60 to 75 dollar class of ships all right so let's get on with the fight and see if the servers oh, yeah, perform servers. any better than they do on any other of these iaes it does and computer says no. You're going to see in this fight that the ship is more than able to hold its own on these very low end adversaries. But desync is ridiculous. And I understand. There is an influx of thousands of people that have never played the game before or have been playing the game inside of these free flies during Invictus, during IAE, and other events that just brings the servers to their knees. Now, as a alpha game, I'm sure that they do not have as many servers as they will have in the future. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I just have an idea that it's just not going to be this bad once the game goes live, especially with server meshing. Now, we took a couple of hits. We didn't lose that much of our shield, if any at all, but... This gun hits hard, and it, it takes down the Mustang shields with absolutely no problem. But now we start having desync issues, and you're going to see the ship all of a sudden disappear. Now, a couple of things have changed in my configuration. I used to use a Warthog HOTUS. I replaced the base of the uh, Warthog with the new Ava, and it was exceptional. It was great. But recently, due to some suggestions from people that I really and honestly think know a lot more about the game than I do, I was, it was suggested that I should get the Gladius. Um, I guess there, it's the Gladius uh, NXT or Gladiator NXT Evo. And I got the throttle and I got the stick. And I have to say, um, I wish I knew about that in the beginning because Star Citizen is amazing with that setup and having access to six degrees of freedom especially in a ship like this where you have amazing acceleration and you can get out of the way of most ships when they're going to crash into you during desync 
is great. So I would suggest the uh, VKB Gladiator for anyone new coming to the game. It's relatively inexpensive when you look at some of the things like the Verples and the higher end VKB Gunfighter and the Warthog, uh, and the Warthog, I should say. But it's also a lot better than equally priced or just a little bit less priced items like the T16000 from Thrustmaster. All right, enough of that. The fight takes longer than it should because of desync. And I'm not sure if every single hit I get is being registered on this because during desync, sometimes a ship is in front of you and you're shooting at it, but it's also, it's, it's also somewhere else at the same time. So you can see I'm making lots of hits and then it disappears. So that might have been where it was the whole time. You have no idea. But even so, if we had perfect server performance, the ship is not meant for combat. It's meant to be able to hold off a few light fighters from taking it down, so a small pirate group, and then to get out of dodge because its acceleration and its speed isn't stellar, but it's excellent. Okay, it, it is really good and you will be able to move this ship away from harm if you are a really good pilot. And being a good pilot takes time. And that's why I've been playing the game a lot lately. All right, so I'm going to give you my initial feelings about this ship as we kill this last little prospector. If I was to buy a starter ship today, based on what I did right now, I may still just suggest the Titan. There's a lot more that you could do in a Titan. It's a lot more versatile. And I believe that if this is your first day in the game, I believe that should still be the ship that you look at. But sometimes what you need doesn't really turn into what you buy. And that happens to me a lot. I think that if you look at this ship from what it's really meant for, doing the courier missions, doing hauling, and then down the road when they release a data runner starter, I think that's something that would push this into the I want to buy scenario for someone coming into the game that's looking at those jobs as where they want to spend their time in the Star Citizen universe. So this is my initial reaction to this ship. I think it's good, and it better be because Batgirl has two on her account. One of those will probably be given away at some point, but I really think that this ship is good for those starter missions. I don't know how well you would want to, I don't know how well this would do for bunker missions, I still think bunker missions, you need something that has the rear door so you can get out and in a lot faster. Being stuck on a ladder or walking, oh, I just realized something. And I'm glad I'm gonna leave it in right here as I say this. This ship has that side ladder that you're not bogged down in an animation. So you could actually run right into the ship. So I'm gonna say, this might be marginally better for bunker missions than I was thinking. All right, folks, that's all I have to say. As I sit here for the next 20 minutes trying to destroy this re reclaimer, I'm just gonna say, I am so happy to be back in Star Citizen. You have no idea how much I've been playing and trying to read the forums and trying to get readjusted to everything in this game. Some things I'm still not extremely good at. As you saw when I got into this battle, I didn't even scan and bring up anything about the ships that I was fighting. All I did was get right into destroying them. But I'm learning and I'm getting back into it. And as soon as this holiday season is over and I'm not working 60 hours a week for Apple, I'm going to get back into a steady cadence. Now it's been a couple of weeks from my last one. I'm going to try to do a little episode like this for each one of the days of IAE. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching my videos. 
You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.